I've tried a few times to grow a nice thick beard using topical minoxidil, Jamaican black castor oil, and derma rolling, but yet no results. And that was two years ago, guys. But I've been doing a lot of research, and I'm going to give it one last shot. And this time around, I'm going to do things differently. Now, if you've been a non-responder like me, then this is the video for you because this video might change it for you. I'll be going over the research behind non-responders and what non-responders can do to become responders. And finally, my new protocol, including everything I'll be using and the research behind all the tools and products I'm using. I'll make sure to put chapters so that you guys can watch the sections you want but I will suggest watching the whole thing because there's a lot of important information. So now let's get to the first part of this video, which is why is it that some people are responders and others like me are not responders when it comes to topical minoxidil. And the difference is an enzyme called sulfur transferase. I definitely said that wrong, but it's also called sulfate 1A1. Some people have a large amount of this enzymes, while others have less. This enzyme can be found in our hair follicles and we have large amounts of it in our livers as well. Now the liver part is a foreshadow, but you can see where I'm going with this, right? When we apply topical minoxidil, this enzyme is what converts minoxidil into its active form, which is called minoxidil sulfate. As a side note, I've looked all over the internet and I could not find minoxidil sulfate. And so there's probably not a product out there that's called minoxidil sulfate. But back to the study. This study shows the link between low activity of the sulfate 1A1 enzyme and a lack of response to minoxidil. Low activity leads to less active minoxidil reaching your hair follicles, which means if you've been using topical minoxidil and you have not seen results, that probably means you have a low level of activity. So now the question becomes, what can we do to become responders? I have several options and in my new protocol, I'll be combining them all. And I just want to add, make sure to do your own research. Everything I'm using, everything I'm doing is because I researched it. So guys, please make sure to do your own research. But back to it, one of the ways non-responders can become responders is by adding tretinoin to their routine, which I have right here. This study showed that when tretinoin is combined with minoxidil usage, the enzyme can become active in non-responders. 43% of subjects they originally taught would not respond became responders to minoxidil in just five days after using tretinoin. Now, tretinoin is for acne and it is prescribed by a dermatologist or your doctor. I got tretinoin because I'm trying to become a responder with topical minoxidil, but also because I get a lot of whiteheads on my nose and would love to stop that from happening and just overall having better skin. So now let's move on to option two, which is taking oral minoxidil. Now, we know that some people do not respond to topical minoxidil because they have low levels of the enzyme in their hair follicles, which means they are unable to convert topical minoxidil to its active form, which is minoxidil sulfate, like we spoke about earlier on. Now, the beauty of oral minoxidil is that because the liver is packed with this enzyme, the minoxidil is converted to its active form, leading to a significant response. For this study, the researchers compared how well different treatments work for hair loss. They found that when people took a pill of minoxidil at a dose of 5 milligrams once a day by mouth, it worked better than using a 2-5% to minoxidil solution and a 5% minoxidil foam. This research also found that oral minoxidil is generally safe to use. However, one common side effect of oral minoxidil is increased hair growth all over the body that includes the beard and the unfortunate part is we can't just use our minoxidil for our hair and our beard it's your whole body however the side effects are reversible but again make sure to talk to your healthcare provider before using anything okay now let's move on to another addition to my new protocol and that is micro needling I have a micro needling pen right here. In the past, I tried to use a derma roller, but I had no results. A derma roller doesn't penetrate the skin deep enough, and it also doesn't penetrate the skin at the right angle, which you want to avoid because it can lead to significant scarring of the skin. And where there is scar tissue, hair does not grow. And that is where a micro needling pen enters the chat. 
Microneedling involves creating small punctures in your skin, which triggers your body's natural healing response. This process stimulates the production of growth factors and nutrients that aid in skin repair and hair growth. The needles used in microneedling can reach deeper layers of the skin where hair follicles are located, providing better stimulation and nourishment. Compared to dermal rollers, microneedling pens are for more controlled depth, allowing you to target a specific layer of the skin for better results without having to worry about scar tissue. Now guys, with this pen right here, you can actually adjust it to the length or the millimeter, I should say. And then it also comes with needles needles that you can put in here and you can use it that way adjusting it from 0.25 to 2.5 millimeters and you can do that with a dermal roller so i would suggest guys if you get something when it comes to micro needling make sure to get a micro needling pen this thing is awesome and it's also just great for your skin i also use it on my forehead the rest of my face because it also just helps with wrinkles and pores and just gives you better skin so i would highly recommend it for more than just hair growing okay now let's move on to how i'm going to structure my protocol so this is what i'm going to do i'll start by taking 2.5 milligrams of our minoxidil every single morning i won't take five milligram for now because i want to see how i react to her first and see if i can get results if i having to move up to five milligrams and four hours before going to bed i'll be applying the topical minoxidil i do four hours before bed so that i can wash my face with a cleanser before bed and really moisturize in order to avoid the damage minoxidil can have on the skin and this will be every evening. I'll be using the Trentinoin twice a week to start off for the first two weeks and then switch to three times a week for another two weeks and continue with this pattern until I'm applying Trentinoin every day. Your skin has to get acclimated to the Trentinoin over time or it will cause a lot of irritation. Trentinoin will be a general part of my skincare routine as well, just like I mentioned earlier. So I want to get it right. And remember guys, if you're using Trentinoin, make sure to apply sunscreen. As for microneedling, I'll be doing that once once a week. On the days I do microneedle, I will not be applying topical minoxidil. However, I will be taking oral minoxidil. So that is my food protocol for now. Guys, I'll be making weekly videos so that you guys can follow along. So make sure to subscribe. And this is also the same treatment I have for my hair loss alongside finasteride. Although I'm thinking of switching to dutasteride. But I have a video coming on that soon. So make sure to subscribe like I said. Peace y'all.